In the last episode, I walked through six different ways to pick a strike price when buying a put option contract. You are likely to choose one way over another based on your personal preference, input, and analysis. But you see, these are most subjective ways of picking a strike price. Are there any more objective ways of looking at it? Are there any rules that are always true? Are there any patterns to follow? Actually, there are. There are some fundamentals that are always objectively true, which can provide you an additional input when you pick a strike price. Therefore, in this video, I'm going to use the most user-friendly language to expand on strike price picking. And I will do that in two chapters. First, I'm going to cover five universal truths and facts on strike prices, something more quantitative and objective that you can look into. Next, I will give an update on a Carvana put that I bought earlier and use it as an example of how I use those five facts to help me decide on $12.50 strike price. Don't worry, you don't need a finance degree for this video and you also don't need to smash the like button just yet to the in the end if you find this video useful or insightful. Hold me accountable. Now without further ado, let's get into it y'all. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine, I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley and I'm here today to use design to explain strike prices. And we will look at strike prices through five different objective lenses and let's go over them one by one in chapter one. Fact number one, the first thing everyone should know about is that picking a strike price is picking a probability of winning, a probability of not losing. And that probability represents your chance of winning with all the information in the world that you have. You know the interest rates at this moment, you know all the news about this company, you know how volatile this stock is, etc. Different strike prices have different probabilities of profit. Fact number two, since it's a probability and a moment in time, any put that you buy at no matter what strike price can go to zero. You can lose it all. That's the inherent risk of buying put options. It can be due to either the nature of probability itself or new information coming. For example, if interest rates increases by power power again, then your original probability at the moment that you bought the put doesn't hold true anymore. That's the risk, it could go to zero. You can buy a put with 90% chance of winning, but never 100%. Fact number three, there's a way to increase the probability of profits by picking a different strike price. If you buy a put with high delta, your chance of winning, your chance of profit will increase. That's always true. In the money puts have higher delta. So the more in the money corresponds to a higher chance of winning. That's always true. High delta puts, deep in the money puts, and high strike prices are related. So if you buy a put with high strike price, the probability will increase as well. That's always true. They go hand in hand. Fact number four. It may already sound very simple, and it is, but there are other factors that could affect your decisions. If you buy a put that has high chance of winning, its payout ratio is lower. Meaning if you pay $1,000 for a put, you might only make maybe $50 profit, 5% return, rather than a 20% return. They are also more expensive to buy. That's why the 600 Tesla strike put is so expensive. On the other hand, Lower strike prices with lower delta, more out of the money, lower chance of winning are cheaper to buy with higher payout ratio. That's the give and take, you win some, you lose some. Among these three things, probability of winning, cost, and payout ratio, those are objective facts. How you execute will be up to you. If you care more about winning, then of course you will go with a higher strike price when you buy a put. If you care more about payout ratio, then you will likely go for a lower strike price, maybe with a 0.3, 0.4 delta strike. If you care about cost, you want to pay less, a lot less for it, then you might go with a 0.1 to 0.2 delta strike price. But of course it's less likely to win. Fact number five. The bottom line is if you buy a Tesla put thinking the Tesla stock will go down, and tomorrow you wake up, it does go down, great. And you should see the price of your put option go up. And you can sell that put right away back to the market and make a quick profit. That's mostly true as long as the theta decay doesn't eat up the gain from the delta. You can always sell the put back early before expiration date to minimize the effect of theta decay. Knowing these five facts is very useful to keep you informed when you buy a new put because you will know what exactly you're getting yourself into, there's no surprise in the end. A few weeks ago, I bought a put on Carvana with a strike price of 
and 50 cents. How did those five facts that we just talked about help influence me, help me decide on that strike price? Let's take a look at it in chapter 2. My $12.50 strike Carvana put. If you don't know what Carvana is, Carvana is an online used car retail company. You buy a car from them online, they deliver it to you at your doorstep. I did some research on the company, so from the get-go, I know they don't have great fundamentals. They're not yet profitable, they have declining earnings, declining negative EPS. They're increasing more share counts, diluting the shareholders. They have a lot of long-term debt and their assets are not that much more than their total debt. Most importantly, it surged over 300% in one month. So I definitely think at that point in time, it was very overvalued. So if we map my Carvana put to all those five facts about strike prices, here's what it looks like. For the first fact of strike price about probability of profit, I've done my research, I know Carvana has bad fundamentals, so time will eventually correct the stock. That's why I chose expiration date to be June. So I have a few months to wait it out, let time correct it. And therefore, no matter which strike that I put, my probability of profits should be pretty high based on that analysis. And that reasoning also maps to fact number three. I don't need to go too high of a strike, too high of a delta, too deep in the money. Because of its bad fundamentals, it should already give me a pretty good chance of winning. Even when I chose an add the money strike or a little bit out of the money strike price. The Bad fundamentals of Carvana also work for fact number 5 as well. Because of the bad fundamental, because it has gone up so much, so overvalued in the past month, it's going to go down, it's going to crash time, it's going to correct the stock. So if the stocks go down, then it's okay for me to buy a slightly out of the money put. And for fact number 2, I already know, I already accepted the fact, the risk that my put can go to zero. I'm okay losing that $440 cost when buying it. So that's okay for me. For fact number four, I opted more for cost because I don't want to spend too much on this small play. And I care less about payout ratio. The probability will be decent based on my analysis. So 440 is about the cost that I'm willing to pay for and that I'm willing to lose. And all those led me to deciding on a $12.50 strike price that was two strikes out of the money at the time that I bought this Carvana put. And it seems like I was right, I bought the Carvana put on February 2nd, 2023. Since then, the underlying stock has been dropping. Then, the Q4 2022 earnings came out about a week ago, and it missed Wall Street's expectation by a wide margin. So the stock tanked another 20%. My put price went all the way up to $640. So if I sell it now, I will profit 200 bucks and a 45% gain in a month. Pretty cool, huh? My put doesn't expire until June, so I do have some time to wait for the stock to drop even more. Combining six different approaches from my last video and these five facts from this video, congrats, you are more knowledgeable than you were 10 minutes ago on picking a strike price on buying puts. If you learned anything new, destroy the like button down below to help support this very small channel and consider subscribing so you don't miss any useful, user-friendly finance videos. To me, before buying a put, it's really important to understand delta, theta, in the money out of money, intrinsic, extrinsic value, and do you know all those have something to do with strike price and they're all interconnected, one influence another? If you don't, no worries, because I've used my best design thinking and craft to simplify all those concepts in these videos for you. Check them out right there. Like and subscribe to help support this channel. Keep using design to square up your finances. See you on the next video. Cheers.